Hi, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. Today we do the real-life consumption test with the Volvo XC90 T8 twin engine, which is the plug-in hybrid. We do this test with empty battery to find out about the proper efficiency of this car, as otherwise it would be masked by the size of the battery and so we can also compare this properly to other full hybrids. This car is my private one. It has a four-cylinder 303 horsepower petrol engine, a 65 kilowatt 87 horsepower electric motor and an 8-speed automatic gearbox from Isin. Battery size is 11.6 kWh gross, around 8.5 net. Unlined weight is 2320 kg, 5104 pounds. WLTP for PHEVs is a rather theoretic number. Personally, I don't even look at it. If you have seen one of my videos yet, you'll be familiar with the route. If not, I'll show it here. We start on the southern outskirts of Innsbruck. After a short ride out of town in a 30 km an hour zone, we start the climb, which elevates us around 360 meters, 1100 feet, followed by a hilly section and a descent, which brings us back to the starting altitude. Open roads, motorway and a 19 km city section conclude this 75 km, 46 mile loop. At the end of every section, we check the overall and sectoral consumption, and at the end, we analyze the data. The cameras will be on all the time, A, for you to see how I am driving, and B, to prove that there is no need to go extra slow and to be an obstacle to other road users in order to be efficient. We are lucky with the weather today, so I hope you enjoy the scenery and the trip, and I'll talk to you later. At the end of the climb, we have 16.8 liters per 100 kilometers. I started the trip with an almost empty battery. You saw the remaining distance for EV driving was zero, but still, occasionally, the petrol engine went off, so there must be some energy in the battery. Most plug-in hybrids try to keep or build up a certain minimum state of charge. In this case, the car always tries to keep around 1.5 kWh base charge in the battery, as this car has a split axle four-wheel drive system, that means the petrol engine drives the front wheels and the electric motor drives the rear wheels. I can either manually switch to four-wheel drive or in power mode all four wheels are driven as well. And in regular hybrid mode you also see that to a small extent the electric motor does a bit of the work in order to release the petrol engine a little bit. And therefore, some energy is needed in the battery. That's also the reason why plug-in hybrids, when you start with an empty battery, often show a high consumption on the first couple of kilometers. The petrol engine is charging the battery, but this is energy which isn't lost. It's just produced now for a later use. Some people don't know or understand this and claim PHEVs are environmental monsters and have double the consumption of a regular petrol car. I don't want to sound overly optimistic, but knowing this car, I'm quite convinced that at the end of our trip, we'll have less than six liters of petrol per 100 kilometers used. As this is, even with an empty battery, still a hybrid car with a rather efficient petrol engine. On the hills, it's important to use the change of gradient to your advantage, especially with hybrids, as you have it in your hands, or better feet, when the petrol engine switches off. For example, when approaching the top of a hill and it's going down afterwards, it makes sense to make the petrol engine go off by just lifting your foot a little bit. 
and also using the momentum from going down into the next hill or flat section is helping to stay in EV mode and avoid the petrol engine to work. After the hills we have 11.6 liters per 100 kilometers. We are now approaching the descent and here comes the big advantage of a plug-in hybrid over a regular full hybrid, the bigger battery. Normally full hybrids have a battery capacity of one maybe one and a half kilowatt hours. Whereas with PHEVs we are often about 10 to 12 times above that. The small battery is full after maybe 150 to 200 meters of drop in altitude whereas with the plug-in hybrid, we can use the whole energy that is stored in the altitude to be converted into electric energy on the way down and used later on. One thing, however, to consider is that most PHEVs have a rather small electric motor with not enough power to brake the car if you brake harshly. So in order to get the highest possible amount of energy into the battery, you need to drive in a way that avoids such hard braking that the regen capacity of the small motor is not exceeded. Here you see the power meter below the ready. This means we are braking and recuperating energy. But if the indicator goes into the orange section, then the friction brakes are used because the electric motor can't produce enough energy to brake the car. At the end of the descent we have 8.0 liters per 100 kilometers Plus, we gain 6 kilometers or 4 miles of electric range, which is even more if I would change to the pure mode, uh, which will help us later to further reduce the consumption. We are coming to the open road section now with speeds between 30 and 100 kilometers per hour, and I will use the electric energy wisely only in sections of low speed, as with higher speeds, the disadvantage in efficiency of a petrol engine versus an electric motor gets smaller. So, at higher speeds, I use the petrol engine. At city speeds, I use the EV mode. This car, as most PHEVs, has a hold function, which means the charge state of the battery is kept at this level for a later use.
We are approaching the motorway now and after the open road section we have a consumption of 6.3 liters per 100 kilometers. Sorry, the GoPro facing the cockpit has just lost power, but when we are on the motorway I will change the battery. On the motorway we are restricted to 100 km per hour, 62 miles per hour, as per local environmental laws. You might have noticed that I sometimes use the individual mode. You can set this yourself. I have set to use the hybrid drive mode plus the lowered position of the chassis, as this car has an S suspension. Gauges are set to RPMs, because I, when I drive this car in hybrid mode I like to keep the revs down for efficiency. And heating climate is on Eco. So GoPro is back and I switched to the current consumption to see how efficient this car can be at steady speed of 100 km per hour and on average it's 6 to 6.5 .6 liters per 100 km. At the end of the motorway we have 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers plus 4 kilometers of electric range in hybrid mode. If I switch to pure mode this range will increase by probably 2 to 3 kilometers as this mode is set to a higher efficiency. In the city it's important to keep the car in motion as yes energy can't be recuperated when you're braking but you never get back what you have invested in the first place so it's always better to try to avoid braking. Or drive in a way that doesn't force you to brake all the time. A quick update, I've switched to pure mode now and you see that the electric range went up from 0 to 3 km. We also see the overall consumption so far with 5.9 liters per 100 km and I said at the beginning that I'm convinced of staying below 6, so we are well on the way towards this goal. Well, now the front facing camera has given up life as well, but this happened just before the end of the trip and when we stop here we see 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers. 
as I have taken this picture just after I've stopped. And now the details. So let's have a look at the sectoral and overall consumption of our trip with the Volvo XC90 plug-in hybrid on the EcoDriver loop. It has to be said that the consumption on the open road and in the city was positively affected by the amount of energy we have gained on the descent as I used the hold mode to save the battery for lower speeds. And this is the table with all the plug-in hybrid tests I have done so far. The main purpose of those tests or this test is to show that plug-in hybrids can be very efficient even if you don't charge the batteries if you drive it correctly. Uh, don't get me wrong, I strongly urge to charge the battery as much as possible, as I do myself, but sometimes it's just not possible. But if that happens, you don't develop a bad conscience or have bad feelings uh, about driving the PHEV with an empty battery because they're still very efficient cars. But the important thing is to understand this technology and to know how to drive PHEVs correctly in order to get a good efficiency. And how to do this? I have done a video with five tips and you can find this video here. And if you want to see how this car performed in the EV range test, you'll find this video down here. And if you're generally interested in what I'm doing and this topic, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss any new video. That's it for the Volvo XC90 plug-in hybrid. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.